very good evening here in Moscow on behalf of the Russia Academy. My name is Mary Trace and I'm very happy for this project to have talks with the Russians and this evening I will introduce to you Sergei Satov. So thank you very much that you are explaining a little bit about Russian life now in these days. Yeah, with pleasure. And nice now time. it's really a pity that we are separated from each other, the Netherlands and Russia. And um, may I ask you, what is the Russian, what is your view the last year about special military operation? How do Russians feel about it? Well, I cannot, firstly, I want to say that I cannot speak from all the Russians. I can only speak about my personal opinion. Uh, of course, uh, the beginning of uh, military operation uh, was uh, a shock for uh, uh, most of the people uh, in our country. And uh, uh, but a lot of people at that time said that uh, it was it was quite evident that uh, this operation will start. Uh, you know that we had, uh, uh, I mean, our government had uh, a lot of negotiations with uh, NATO with uh, uh, with the Americans and uh, these uh, negotiations didn't lead to anything and uh, so for some people not for me it was it was quite evident that this operation will start maybe not today maybe in a month but for me personally it was uh, yes a shock yeah. In the Netherlands, they say in general that the Russians are having uh, uh, only the state television and that you have no freedom to think. Uh, did you mention, for example, that we have uh, as well uh, one sided information? Well, <laughs> you know, of course, we have the same. We have. Uh, the same propaganda as you have uh, in the West and I think reasonable people know about that mm -hmm. because now uh, probably in the past it was quite uh, uh, quite difficult to hide because uh, we didn't have YouTube we didn't have social media in spite of the fact that social media are controlled by the West but we know the examples of Twitter, Elon Musk, who is trying to, um, who is trying to give uh, some objective information, some other information rather than uh, mass media in the United, well, the central mass media in the in the United States. So we have the same. Of course, uh, we stayed for a couple of days in Netherlands together with my wife and we stayed in a very nice hotel in Zandam and uh, after a day in Amsterdam we uh, came back to the hotel and we went to the lobby ba a bar to have a couple of drinks and then go to bed and there was a bartender a young Dutch woman uh, who uh, was speaking to another Dutchman who was sitting at the bar stand and uh, she addressed us, uh, how do you like it in Netherlands? I said, well, we like it, everything, uh, everything is okay, everything is good, it's fine, I liked it very much. Uh, but I found one problem when we went to Albert and Hein, this is a big <laughs> chain uh, uh, oh, shop, okay. yes, yeah. food shop. Uh, I wanted to pay there with my Visa card. Yeah. But it was impossible. Uh, you can pay only with Maestra card, uh, and you should go to some very uh, far uh, cash desk to pay by cash. So it was quite a problem. Uh, yeah. I said that 
it was a very surprise for me, a, a big surprise for me, because I thought that Visa Maestra making it easy for everyone around the world, and because I thought that Visa Maestra is very frequently used in Netherlands, but it wasn't. Uh, and I said, we see that the things are changing about this situation. And she said, why should we change? It's you who should change. It was a very big surprise, well, not surprise, it was a big emotional um, change in my understanding of uh, my position in, in uh, regarding to my country and in the world. And uh, there was also another one connected with <laughs> Netherlands. Uh, it was in 2014 when we came uh, we had very, uh, when we came to Netherlands, uh, we had very, uh, well, severe economic situations. The currency exchange uh, levels rocketed. The euro co uh, costed, well, cost uh, 100 rubles, and we didn't know what, uh, what, uh, what's going on at that time. And uh, <clears throat> some of your friends that uh, uh, were supporting us during our tour uh, asked uh, what's going on. I said, I don't know, maybe uh, as soon as I come back to Moscow, I will be jobless. And she said, come here. Well, it's better to, to we can just think over how to organize, how to find a job here and things like that. And I, it came to my mind that I do not want to come to Netherlands. I belong to this country. I'm, I'm happy or grateful that you, that you say this. A kind of arrogance there is in the West. It's not only American style, uh, how it is to, uh, nowadays. But 30 years ago, you were mentioning about the Yeltsin time. Mm. I saw it with my own eyes here in Russia. How many poor people, what it did the collapse of the Soviet Union yeah. to you. How many people like your father lost their jobs. How the proud of the country was not there anymore. How many children without parents, how many drugs. And it was for me like Sodom and Gomorrah. I've never seen uh, something like that. It's one of the reasons why the West is not understanding enough about Russia nowadays, how they are standing up and why the people are promoting or why they are working so hard like you. I but on the other side, I, I, I discovered when I tried to, 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 to say this in the Netherlands, they were looking with eyes to me from what are you speaking, uh, talking about? Yeah, and a lot of Russians, they can work here when they are talented. But it's your patriotic uh, character. You would like to do something for your country. But the arrogance of the West, it's not always uh, bad. Uh, it's no clue about what they, are, what they are talking. They really think economics, politics, social life, that in the West everything is better. Yeah. And now we, we see the result. Now we are in that way, um, Russia knows after 20 years that there was no place for Russia. Now they looked on the other side. Yeah, but uh, first of all, I wouldn't say that, uh, well, you're saying the West, the West, the West. Mm. So uh, the, my idea of giving you the example of uh, communication with this young mm. Dutch woman mm -hmm. is that I think not uh, all the people that live mm. in the Western countries mm. think that or think of this, have this uh, collective West ideas. Mm. So I think that there are lots of people in Netherlands mm. who think first about the Netherlands. There are a lot of people in Hungary, mm. you know, uh, who think about Hungary first. Mm. And there are a lot of peop people in the United States mm -hmm that support the idea of America first. Let's make America great again. Mm -hmm. So, uh, speaking about the, these ideas, I wouldn't speak about the, 
that I wouldn't say that all the people support this idea. I, I, I don't think so. No, of course. So this trend mm -hmm. to globalization, to uh, exporting uh, so-called Western democrat democracy, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, it's quite um, global now. And uh, there are countries who started to fight with it. Uh, maybe not to fight, started to oppose. It's quite difficult to oppose when uh, there are, like, well, so big and uh, economically sta stable countries uh, say that this is good for you and this is not good for you. Uh, it's quite uh, difficult to oppose, but um, we shall see where it uh, goes to finally. Uh, I think I'm quite optimistic about uh, what's going uh, to be with uh, Russia in the future. Um, your explanation, how it went wrong, what, what did you mean by that? Where was it where we separated or what was... Well, I cannot say that we are separated. Well, we are, as you say, quite correctly, indoctr indoctrinated. Mm -hmm. We have a very big uh, historical connections with uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. And throughout our history, uh, of course, we had conflicts, we had uh, uh, friendship, uh, because we are close to each other in, in terms of territory, so we are neighbors. Uh, so sometimes neighbors uh, quarrel. Uh, but I don't think that we are separated now from just once and forever. I think that in some time uh, we'll find uh, some connections, economic connections, uh, but uh, after wars, usually, the first thing that uh, people are looking for the connection is culture. Mm. In some time, uh, we understand that we are not the enemies to each other and will start cooperation once again. Tell me a little bit about the NATO. How do, how do Russians think about the NATO subject? Well, of course, we, well, we, I personally, and the most, I think, uh, of my friends understand that uh, what was NATO created for? Mm. Uh, it was created for uh, keeping uh, the fascist Germany mm -hmm. uh, not very high, well controlling it. Mm -hmm. and uh, not allowing Soviet Union to, uh, to expand mm -hmm. and uh, to, to, to play a sufficient role in, uh, uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. I, th I think uh, and I uh, see NATO as our rival uh, our, and uh, I see that uh, I have seen a lot of examples that it won't uh, do any good to my country and to me personally because uh, uh, it's not a defense union because uh, if you defend you do not expand you defend uh, and you try to keep the limits you are in. That's my idea about this. But uh, I understand there are different meanings regarding that. I have seen a lot of, um, a lot of uh, news uh, regarding the expansion, how the NATO uh, explained the, exp the expansion. Actually, it was quite uh, a surprise for me that there's a stand-up comedian, uh, American, uh, I don't remember his name, but I will find his name and uh, show you. 
he has uh, another opinion regarding the Western uh, propaganda. And he said that he watched an interview that was made in 1993. This was, uh, this was an interview with, uh, with an American who worked in NATO. He had a quite a high post, quite positioned there. And in 1993, he said that they, there will be the expansion of NATO, and after that, there will be a war with Russia. And they, NATO, will say, now see why we expanded. That's the result we expanded to prevent this war. But, and after that, I uh, watched a speech of uh, Jens Stoltenberg, so the head of NATO, who said it was a modern uh, interview with him, who said the same words. So I understand that this scenario was written very, very long ago. It is like that. And now we are just taking part in this scenario. And I don't like it. I don't want to take part in this scenario. You know, when I moved to Moscow, uh, we had quite a lot of problems with terrorist attacks in Moscow, in Moscow Metro, mm -hmm. in the houses. And I was a participant of uh, this situation. Uh, I was in Volgograd when the bomb at railway station in Volgograd in 2003, oh no, in 2013, I think was exploded, and a lot of people died. Uh, it's the city I studied in. And the only thing I had in my mind at that time, I don't want this to happen anymore. So, and since that time, we had quite a long period without those things. And I understood that our government, our president, could deal with this situation. Maybe it's about our, uh, our uh, troops went to Syria, I think partly because of that. But the results were that we don't have these terrorist attacks anymore. And uh, I understood for myself that uh, it was efficient, so these politics that our government, that our president uh, is doing, is good. So I saw the real results. The results of a special military operation are not evident now, but I think they will be evident uh, in the future. What does it mean to you to have such a big problem with Ukraine for the future? I don't think that uh, having a war with a very close nation, with very close, uh, uh, is uh, very different from having a war with a very far nation. Mm -hmm. So it's the same war. Mm -hmm. People are dying. Of course, it's a tragedy uh, because uh, we have very close connections, uh, relations, friends in Ukraine, and Ukrainians have friends in Russia. And, uh, but if I think that uh, we have the same problems just living in a family, you know a lot of examples when two brothers do not speak to each other because they have uh, problems with their property, they didn't share the property fairly, and they do not speak to each other in spite of the, friend, uh, in spite of the fact that they are one and the same blood. So I think this is the same situation. We shouldn't think about this war as a concept that two very close nations are fighting, this is bad. Yes, this is bad. 
but every war is bad and we shouldn't do anything to make it happen and uh, but some things are inevitable probably so if you see that your neighbor is dealing with bad people you come to this neighbor and say do not do this because uh, it affects me think about it it's uh, quite easy for reasonable people to find the truth if they are looking for this truth. Yeah. Uh, if they are indoctrinated mm -hmm. in social media, uh, in television and newspapers, and well, if they uh, think they are they are able to filter it, well, people are different. Some people understand, and I believe that there, is, there are quite a lot of people in the West, in Netherlands, that understand that, what is what. That in 2021, uh, the negotiations with NATO, with the Americans, of signing the security contract with uh, Russia failed. They refused to, to sign it. And, uh, well, if people in the West do not know about that. It's a fact mm -hmm. and it's quite easy to find in the internet. Thank you. But uh, so what to say here? So they do not want to know that. Mm -hmm. They probably want to be safe in their world uh, of these ideas. Probably, well, I cannot uh, judge them Probably it's safer for them to think in this way, mm -hmm. but uh, in reality the things are different. But what can you say now? Do you believe in it? Do you know a way to, to ask Zelensky, to ask the Ukrainian government, to ask the, the, the Ukrainian people in the Donbass to have a, a peace um, solution? Do you have any idea? Well, I'm not a politician. Yeah. I'm just uh, an ordinary man that can uh, judge the situation uh, regarding my own ideas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will not have any problems of uh, sitting at one table and mm -hmm. having dinner at one table with uh, Ukrainian people because it's I think Russia is fighting not with the Ukrainians. They are fighting with the uh, nationalists that want to uh, oppose to Russia. And uh, of course it will be uh, much more difficult to find uh, the same language and the same ideas with these people. But I don't think that all the people in Ukraine are this way. I thank you very, very much for your insight in your life in Russia. Thank you for uh, giving me such an opportunity to share my ideas with the people who are interested in what you're doing. And I hope that you will, have, you will be succeeded in this in the future. Great. Anyway, I wish you a success. <laughs>